I have another common question for um, all of you about regional organizations and extra-regional organizations, because the WPC, it's about the global governments, the regional go governance. So it's very important to speak about uh, the uh, different uh, regional and global organizations. Kazakhstan is part of almost all regional organizations, unlike Georgia and Moldova. So my questions will be different for Kazakhstan. Which regional organization will survive this war in Ukraine? The Eurasian Economic Union is very affected by sanctions. The Collective Security Treaty Organization had a moment of kind of glory in January with the peacekeeping operation in Kazakhstan. But on the other hand, uh, it remains uh, powerless in the conflict in Nagorno-Karabakh and the conflict on the border between Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan. In mid-October, Kyrgyzstan announced the cancellation of the military exercises planned with the framework of uh, Collective Security Treaty Organization. And what about the community of independent states? Is the war in Ukraine the last uh, nail in the coffin of this organization. And on the other hand, the organizations that go beyond the region seems to be doing uh, quite well. The Shanghai Cooperation Organization, but also the Conference for Interaction and Confidence Building Measures in Asia. So how do you see things? And then I will formulate question uh, for Georgia and Moldova. Well, um, Kazakhstan, being the largest landlocked country um, and being the country that is uh, neighboring Russia and China has uh, ever since its independence pursued a multi-vector foreign policy, a balanced approach to our foreign policy, which uh, among other things prioritizes the internationalization of our international relations, meaning the establishment, the relevant and the needed uh, international organizations and that is why Kazakhstan has been the founder of many of the organizations you mentioned or the initiator even such as the uh, conference on interaction and confidence building measures in Asia which is an OEC type organization for Asia that we initiated 30 years ago but I will per perhaps highlight the example of the Eurasian Economic Union to a, a, a child a brainchild of, of Kazakhstan's leadership uh, two established in uh, uh, Kazakhstan in 2014. For us, uh, that is first and foremost an economic organization because uh, uh, we want to have closer ties to the outside world. And that union, it helped remove the customs borders within the union. That is why it was uh, one of the major reasons for the success of the China to Europe land bait based transportation across uh, Kazakhstan over the past 10 years before this uh, war uh, began. So uh, we will continue to uh, support these organizations. We will continue to uh, pursue our own national interests. And you may have seen our President Tokayev addressing uh, the um, Eurasian Economic Union leadership just yesterday in neighboring Kyrgyzstan, where he uh, prioritized uh, uh, economic cooperation first and foremost. Um, so we will uh, support these institutions. We think each and every one of them plays their own role. Um, I don't think it's the matter of which one survives. Each and every one of them has their own challenges, indeed. CEO, CSTO played a role in uh, helping over Kazakhstan overcome its own internal turmoil in January. And yes, uh, within this institution there are some some ongoing challenges and discussions about its future direction or its future meaning, but we believe they, they have a role to play. Uh, we don't need to forget, of course, that uh, Afghanistan is not far away from Central Asia and from Kazakhstan, and that is a top priority for uh, several institutions which you mentioned, including CSTO or the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. So, uh, I mean, however tragic that uh, war is, uh, there are numerous challenges outside uh, of Ukraine and uh, Afghanistan being one of them or uh, illegal migration being another one. Climate change is another one. So we will continue to uh, strengthen and participate in all institutions as long as uh, that is in our national interest. Thank you very much. 
I will reformulate the question for Moldova and, and uh, Georgia. Of course, uh, for you, the main questions today is uh, the relationship with the uh, European Union and uh, NATO. Uh, Moldova is now the candidate. How do you see the path toward membership? What are you doing for that now? And how many time it can take? Um. Indeed, European integration and European membership is an absolute priority uh, for the govern current government. This is also the mandate that the government got from the citizens. So we spend no effort to press on with reforms despite all the challenges that, that I have uh, uh, described before. Um, we are aware that there are no shortcuts. We're committed to hard work. We're committed to reforms. When the European Union granted us the candidate status, um, the Commission recommended nine steps that we need to take. Uh, we're currently implementing this um, action plan. About one third of uh, this work is, um, is done. We have created a National Commission for European Integration, which is chaired by the President, which includes civil society. Um, and it oversees the, the progress of reforms that pave the way to, uh, to European Union. Um, now, this, these are wide-ranging steps that we need to take. Most of them um, are in the uh, justice, justice sector, also uh, tackling the influence of, um, of oligarchs in the media sphere and the political life and the um, in the economy, we are also bil building up administrative capacity to deliver on these reforms. Uh, so just, uh, just last week, we were recruiting um, about 24, uh, new p 24 new positions at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, um, and obviously preparing to, to s for accession negotiations, just preparing the ground, creating working groups. Um, and creating coordination uh, mechanisms for that. Thank you very much, Olga. Mr. Dersalia, uh, I would put it, uh, I will put it uh, bluntly. Uh, are you disappointed not to have been accepted as candidate when you expressed your European orientation very early? How do you see the relationship with European Union in the mid and long term? Well, it's, we very clearly uh, said, first of all, that it's uh, still a step. Uh, we already made one step, which is granting Georgia the European perspective. Uh, uh, so this is first step. Uh, the, uh, I would not hide expectations was more, well, considering the Georgia's um, achievements during all these uh, last two, three decades. Um, and we really hope that when the decision will be uh, made the next year, it will be a merit-based decision, and Georgia will uh, will make there as well. And uh, it's very uh, well from our side. We are very committed uh, to continue this path of reform. Uh, we started this reform not only because of our goal of membership, but this is first of all for uh, our nation. Saint Georgia is committed. Uh, the whole political class in Georgia is committed to continue on this path, and we really are hope and are sure that. Uh, uh, during the next decision, uh, Georgia will uh, will be uh, will make the next step uh, on this path. Uh, regard, but generally talking about the European and Euro Atlantic perspective, I want to say that Georgia has two red lines. This is uh, territorial integrity and European and Euro Atlantic uh, integration. This is very clear, and this is really red line. This is not neither pink or any other color. There is conventional agreement even about this in Georgia. And I'm saying conventional because we have it in our constitution. Uh, so Georgia's European and Euro-Atlantic aspiration, as well as territorial integrity, which is existential for any country. And for, first of all, this is, uh, and I'm saying together, European and Euro-Atlantic, uh, because this is not for us, uh, not only choice of uh, welfare or security, one, but this is, first of all, choice of values and to which uh, part of the world, to which civilization we belong to. So that's why it is a uh, red line for Georgians as well. And generally saying, I want to say a few words about the international order in general, that Georgia strongly supports uh, multilateralism as such. And uh, I really hope that when we are back to reestablish uh, 
uh, European security architecture uh, or when we are back to uh, uh, correct all this raw damage which was done by the uh, invasion in Ukraine to the international system, uh, the multilateralism as a principle will be the one which will be even more strengthened. And that is, if talking about which organization Russia supports, Russia generally supports multilateralism. Uh, and the organizations which will be part of the multilateralism will survive, we hope. Thank you very much, Mr. Darsale, because you built a perfect bridge to my uh, next question. With